We are now on Beowulf part 35, Reminiscences Continued, Beowulf's Last Battle. He seeks then his chamber, singeth a woe song, one for the other, all too expensive, seemed homesteads and plains. So the helm of the weeders, mindful of Herbald, heart sorrow carried, stirred with emotion, no wise was able to wreck his ruin on the ruthless destroyer. He was unable to follow the warrior with hatred, with deeds that were direful, though dear he not held him. Then, pressed by the pang this pain occasioned him, he gave up glee, God light elected. He left to his sons, as the man that is rich does, his land and fortress, from when from life he departed. Then was crime and hostility, twixt Swedes and Geatmen, or wide stretching water wearing was mutual burdensome hatred when Herethel had perished, and Onglatho's Ong offspring were active and valiant, wished not to hold to peace over sea, but round her Sona Burrow often accomplished cruelest massacre. This my kinsmen avenged, the feud and fury, as tis found on inquiry, though one of them paid with it forfeit of life joys. With price that was hard, the struggle became then fatal to hasten, lord of the gatemen. Then I heard at morning one brother the other, with edges of irons egged on to murder, where Ongertho maketh the onset of Eofer. Helmet, the helmet crashed, the hoary-haired skiefling, sword smitten fell. His hand then remembered, feud hate sufficient, refused not the death blow. The gems that he gave me, with jewel-bright sword, I quitted in contest as occasion was offered. Land he allowed me, life joy at homestead, manor to live on, little he needed, from Gipids or Danes, or in Sweden to look for trooper less true, with treasure to buy him. Among foot soldiers ever in front I would hide me, alone in the vanguard, and ever more gladly warfare shall wage, while this weapon endureth that late and early often did serve me, when I proved before heroes the slayer of de Greffen. Knight of the huge men, he by no means suffered. To the king of the Frisians to carry the jewels, the breast decoration, but the banner possessor bowed in the battle. Brave mooded eighthling, no weapon was slayer, but war grapple broke then the surge of his spirit, his body destroying. Now we shall weapon's edge make war for the treasure, and hand and firm sword. Beowulf spake then, boast words uttered, the latest occasion. I braved in my youth days battles unnumbered. Still, I am willing the struggle to look for, fame deeds perform, folk ward and prudent. If the hateful despoiler forth from his cavern seeketh me out. So he's basically shouting, declaring that he's fearless. Each of the heroes, helm bearers sturdy, he thereupon greeted beloved co liegeman his last salutation. No brand would I bear, no bade for the dragon, wist I away my word boast accomplish. Else with the monster, as with Grendel I did it, but fire in the battle hot I expected there, furious flames burning, so I fixed on my body, target and war mail, the ward of the barrow, I'll not flee from a foot length the foeman uncanny, and while twill befall us as fate decreeth, each one's creator. I am eager in spirit, with the winged war hero to away with all the boasting. Bide on the barrow with Bernie's protected, earls in armor, which of us, too, may better bear his disaster when the battle is over. So he's saying, wait till the battle is over, stay here. Tis no matter of yours, and man cannot do it, but to me, but me, and me only, to measure his strength with the monster of malice, might deeds to accomplish. I, with prowess, shall gain the gold, or the battle. Direful death woe will drag you off your ruler. The mighty champion rose by his shield then, brave under helmet. In battle mail went he, neath stiff rising stone cliffs, the strength he relied on, of no one man alone. No work for a coward. Then he saw by the wall, who a great many battles had lived through, most worthy, when food Foot troops collided, stone arches standing, stout-hearted champion. Saw a brook from the barrow bubbling out thenceward. The flood of the fountain was fuming with war flame, not nigh on the horde, for season the briefest. 
Could he brave without burning? The abyss that was yawning, the drake was so fiery. The prince of the weeders caused then that words that come from his bosom. So fierce was his fury, the firm-hearted shouted. His battle clear voice came in resounding. Neath the gray-colored stone stirred was his hatred. The horde ward, ward distinguished the speech of a man. Time was no longer to look out for friendship. The breath of the monster issued forth first. Vapory war sweat, war sweat out of the stone cave. The earth re-echoed. The earl, neath the barrow, lifted his shield, lord of the geatmen, toward the terrible stranger. The ring-twisted creature's heart was then ready to seek for a struggle. The excellent battle king first brandished his weapon, the ancient heirloom of edges unblunted. So Beowulf's got his sword. To the death planners twain was, so was terror from other. The lord of the troopers, intrepid, stood then against his high rising shield when the dragon coiled him. Quickly together, in corset he bided. Then he went in blazes, bending and striding, hastening him forward. His life and body, the tage well protected, for time period shorter than wish demanded for the well renowned leader. Where he then, for the first day, was forced to be victor, famous in battle as fate had not willed it. The Lord of the Geatmen unlifted his hands then, smiting the fire drake with sword that was precious, that bright on the bone the blade edge did weaken, bit more feebly than his folk leader needed, burdened with bale griefs. Then the narrow bale protector, when the sword blow had fallen, was fierce in his spirit. So the dragon's real mad. Flinging his fires, flamings of battle, gleamed then afar, the gold friend of Weeders boasted no conquest. His batter's battle sword failed him, naked in conflict, as by no means it ought to, long trusty weapon. So his sword has failed him. Twas no slight undertaking that a Grothro's famous offspring would leave the Drake Cavern's bottom. He must live in some region other than this, by the will of the dragon, as each one of the Earthmen's existence must forfeit. Twas early thereafter the excellent warriors met with each other, anew and afresh the horde ward took heart, gasps heaved then in his bosom. <sighs> Sorrow he suffered, encircled with fire, who the people erst governed. His companions by no means were banded about him, bairns of the princes, with valorous spirit, but they sped to the forest, seeking for safety. The soul deeps of one were ruffled by care, can love can never aught in him waver, who well doth consider. So his comrades flee, the comment of blood being thicker than water. Now we are on part 36, Wiglaf the trusty, Beowulf is deserted by friends and by sword. The son of Wehostan was Wiglaf entitled, shield warrior precious, prince of the Scaleflings, Eyal Flair's kinsman. He saw his dear liege lord enduring the heat neath helmet and visor. Then he minded the holding that erst had, he had given him. The, Wagling, the Wagmunding's warrior's wealth blessed homestead. Each of the folk rights his father had wielded. He was hot for the battle. His hand seized the target, the yellow bark shield. He unsheathed his old weapon, which was known among earthmen as the relic of Ananmund, Othier's offspring, whom, exiled and friendless, Wehostan did slay with his sword edge in battle, and carried his kinsmen to the clear shining helmet, the ring made Bernie, the old giant weapon that Onila, Wanila gave him, his boon fellow's armor, ready war trappings. He, the feud, did not mention, though he'd fatally smitten the son of his brother. Many a half year held he the treasures, the bill and the burney, till his baron became able, like his father before him, fame deeds do accomplish. Then he gave him Mung Geatman, a goodly array of weeds for his warfare. He went from life then old on his journey. Twas the earliest time then the useful champion might charge in the battle, aiding his liege lord. His spirit was dauntless, nor did kinsmen's bequest quail at the battle. This the dragon discovered on their coming together. Wiglaf uttered many a right saying, said to his fellows, sad was his spirit. 
I remember the time when, tasting the mead cup, we promised in the hall of the Lord of us all, who gave us these ring treasures, that this battle equipment, swords and helmets, we'd certainly quit him, should need of such aid ever befall him. So he's kind of trying to appeal to the pride of the cowards. In the war band he chose us for this journey spontaneously, stirred us to glory and gave me these jewels, since he held and esteemed us to trustworthy spearmen, hardy helm bearers, though this hero achievement our Lord intended alone to accomplish. Ward of his people, for most of achievements, doings audacious he did among earth folk. The day is now come when the ruler of earthmen needeth the vigor of valiant heroes. Let us wend us towards him, the war prince to succor, while the heat ye rageth, horrible fire fight. God woke in me, tis mickle the leafier, the blaze should embrace my body and eat it with my treasure bestower. Me seemeth not proper to bear our battle shields back to our country lest first we are able to fell and destroy the long-hating foemen to defend the life of the prince of the welders. So he's saying that um, he'd rather die than not help Beowulf, and Beowulf doesn't deserve to die alone. Earned by his exploits, he only of Gateman's sorrow should suffer, sink in the battle. Brand and helmet us both shall be uncommon, shield cover Bernie. Though the bale smoke he stalked then, went under helmet to the help of his chieftain, briefly discoursing. Beowulf, dear, perform thou all fully, as thou formerly saidest in thy youthful years, that when thou livest, thou wouldest let thine honor not ever be lessened. Thy life shalt save, mighty in actions, aethling undaunted. With all of thy vigor, I'll give thee assistance. The dragon came, raging, wild-mooded stranger, when these words had been uttered was the second occasion, seeking his enemies, men that were hated, with hot gleaming fire waves, with blaze billows burned in the board to its edges. The fight armor failed then to furnish assistance to the youthful spear hero, but the young age stripling quickly advanced neath his kinsman war target, since his own had been ground in the grip of the fire. Then the warrior king was careful of glory. He, smote, he soundly smote with sword for the battle, that it, stand, that it stood in the head by hatred driven. Nagling was shivered. The old and iron made brand of Beowulf in battle deceived him. Twas denied him that the edges of irons were able to help in the battle. The hand was too mighty, which every weapon, as I heard on inquiry, outstruck in its stroke when the struggle he carried, the wonderful war sword, it waxed him no better than the people despoiler, third of his onsets, fierce raging fire drake, of feud hate was mindful, charged on the strong one when chance was afforded, so the dragon's back now to Beowulf, heated and war grim, seized on the neck with teeth that were bitter, he bloody did wax with the soul goring seething, sword blood in waves boiled. All right. Now we are on part, oh, that's it for this video. I can only do 15 minutes at a time.